While some tech giants are preparing to keep a remote workforce, Amazon is heading the other way with a new hiring push. The company says it's planning a $1.4 billion expansion in six American cities. To discuss the future of the office, let's bring in Anthony Malkin. He's the CEO of Empire State Realty Trust. He joins us live now from New York. Anthony, thank you so much for being with us. So one of the biggest lessons um, from this pandemic is really the fact that, you know, you don't really need to live in a place like New York City in order to be able to work for a New York City company. Um, based on that, what happens to high rise or high, very expensive real estate markets like Manhattan, for example, during this pandemic? Well, I, I would uh, argue the point, saying I would say that uh, actually work from work is what's the future. Uh, work from home is what is to sustain us and what allows us to uh, get through this very difficult, disruptive time. I think Facebook, Amazon, uh, each of those has just made very large commitments, continued commitments to New York City. When you look at work from work, team building, project development and execution, how do you develop culture? How do you have that hallway validation? You go to a meeting, what happens on the way to the meeting, away from the meeting? It's very different from you click on and off on Zoom. And I do think that people want to be at work. These young kids want to be at work. You've got a whole group of people whose lives have been altered, not just by going to work, but going to school. Uh, but they don't want to get killed. You know, they don't want to get sick. So, so long as we're in this interim period, I think that work from home will allow us to continue. Work from work will allow us to move forward. However, um, I think a lot of companies are really realizing just how expensive it is to operate these, especially in a place like Manhattan, these hugely expensive office buildings. Obviously, a lot of companies, um, if they downsize and allow people to work from home, they can end up saving a, a significant amount of money. So based on that, even if you think that people will go back to the office eventually, surely the types of space that they invest in will change. I think that's interesting. Number one, I think you'll find a lot less in, in density. I think you'll find a lot less in hot desking where you show up and you, you, you sit down at any available space. I think people will want their spaces. People don't want to be as crammed together as these, these offices were. You know, New York City actually compared to Hong Kong, London, Paris, uh, other major uh, international capitals is actually extremely reasonably priced. It's less expensive both in living and office occupancy than San Francisco. Um, just in terms of the Empire State, obviously an iconic building um, in New York City that's reopened, actually. How do you figure out how and when to reopen um, somewhere that is, you know, a, a major draw for tourists at a time like this? So we actually uh, have been open and, and with our observatory for we're in our fourth week now. Uh, we're largely catering to locals because of all of the quarantine orders uh, required from many states that come into New York State. But we've been we, we've been open uh, our 102nd floor. We expect to open on the 24th of of this month, uh, and uh, we have made certain adjustments. Uh, to protocols. People have to uh, buy tickets online before they come in for a scheduled time for a visit. But we're open and we look forward to uh, the fact that we'll be joined by the Metropolitan Museum of Art, Museum of Natural History, 9-11 Museum, all these cultural establishments that will open on the 24th of August. So how does the sort of post-COVID experience change um, for a tourist attraction like the Empire State Building? How will the feel of it be different with uh, these restrictions? Well, well, post-COVID, I think that it's going to be absolutely back to where it was. During COVID, we have uh, gotten rid of certain things that you would touch, with which you would interact, things to which you put your eyes close to them. Uh, th that, that's different. You have to buy your ticket online, get a temperature check on your way in. We have hand sanitizer all over the place. Uh, different dispensers available. And we have our, our, our workers are actually going through extensive safety protocols, specific training uh, through which we went, specific uh, personal protection uh, equipment. So in this interim period, while COVID is still out there, uh, we have made certain adjustments. We've reduced our capacity and our density as well. All right, uh, Anthony Malkin, live for us there. Thank you so much.